Hi, this is Tim Rudin, author of Statistics in Plain English. And in this video, we're going to talk about uh, z-scores, or standard scores, and how to find probabilities and percentile scores uh, that are associated with particular z-scores. So, what I've drawn here is a normal distribution. Just pretend that that looks like an actual normal distribution. And um, this really only works if you have population data. So if you know the population standard deviation, you can um, calculate percentile scores or um, figure out the probabilities associated with certain raw scores. Or if you have sample data and you know that the data form a normal distribution, uh, that'll work as well. So before we get into how you use Appendix A and the normal distribution to find probabilities and percentile scores, I'm just going to demonstrate real quickly how to calculate a z-score and interpret it. So suppose that we are talking about um, uh, IQ test scores and in the population the average IQ score is 100 with a standard deviation of 15. The question that you might want to answer is um, something like, suppose that my son has an IQ score of 105. Um, what's his z-score? What is his standardized score? So to calculate that, you just use the z-score formula. Now to calculate a z-score, you can do this with sample data or with population data. So if it were sample data, that would be an x-bar instead of a mu. And if it, then instead of that standard deviation for the population, you'd have the estimate of the standard deviation uh, for the sample. Either way, the z-score will come out to be the same. It's just a question of what can you then do with the z-score. So in this example, if I have a raw score, that's the x is a raw score. If you have a raw score of 105, what would the z-score be? When we plug our numbers into here, and we get the raw score of 105 minus the population mean of 100 divided by the population standard deviation of 15. 105 minus 100 is 5. 5 divided by 15 is 1 third, or 0.33. So that is our z-score. If you've got an individual with a raw score of 105, population mean of 100, population standard deviation of 15, that person's z-score will be 0.33. So what does that tell you? Well, notice this formula is taking the difference between the raw score and the mean divided by the standard deviation, which means it is converting that difference into standard deviation units. And that's how you interpret the z-score. This z-score of 0.33 tells us that that individual had a IQ score that was one-third of a standard deviation above the mean. And that's how you interpret a z-score. So it just tells you how far away either above or below uh, an individual score is from the mean, from the average. Now, if I know that I'm dealing with a normal distribution, and when we have a population, when we have population data, we assume this is a normal distribution, I can then use that z-score to find what is this person's, the probability of getting a z-score that high by chance. In other words, what proportion of the normal distribution would score below that z-score and what proportion would score above? Now, when answering that question, it's very helpful to draw the graph. So here's the graph of the normal distribution. And in the middle of that graph is the population mean, because the middle of a normal distribution has the mean, the median, and the mode. So the mean here is 100. And we have a raw score over here of 105. And we know that that raw score has a z-score of 0.33. Now here's what we want to figure out.
what proportion of the normal distribution falls below that raw score or Z score? And what proportion falls above? What we want to be able to say is the probability of getting a raw score of 105 or higher by chance is blank. And that's what this proportion will tell you. So now that we have a z-score, we can look at Appendix A and find, remember in Appendix A, what you get is a z-score and it tells you the proportion of the normal distribution that falls below that z-score. So in Appendix A, with a z-score of 0.33, let's look it up right now. With a z-score of 0.33, the proportion of the distribution, of the normal distribution that falls to the left of that or below that is 0.6293. So, in a normal distribution, we would expect 62.93% of the normal population to have a score below 105. Looks like that. To find this part, what percentage or proportion of the normal distribution would we expect to have a score of 105 or higher, we, we know that the entire normal distribution contains 100% of the population. If 62.93% is below this score of 105, the part that's above is 1 minus that. So if we subtract this proportion from 1, we end up with 0 0.3707. That is this area of the normal distribution. And we can say we would expect 37.07% of a normal distribution to have a score of 105 or above on the IQ test. That's how you use the normal distribution to determine the probability of an event occurring by chance. <clears throat> that 0 0.3707, that's a p-value. <clears throat> that's the probability of getting this raw score of 105 by chance, and that's what a p-value means. So that's how you calculate a z-score, and that is how you interpret a z-score, and that is how you use a z-score to determine the proportion of the normal distribution that falls beyond a particular z-score. Okay, a couple other things that we can do with this z-score. First, whatever applies up here on the positive side above the mean would also apply on the negative side. So if we had a raw score of 95, and we calculated the z-score, we would get the same z-score, but it would just be negative. It would be z equals negative 0.33. And in this case, we would want to know what's the proportion of the normal distribution that falls below this z-score. And it would be the same as the Portion of the normal distribution that fell above this c-score, which would be 0.3707. Now you might want to know, well, what's the proportion of the distribution that we would expect to get between the mean and the c-score? What's this?
what's that proportion of the normal distribution? What proportion of the normal distribution scores between the mean and a particular raw score or a particular z score? And for that, you just have to sort of think about what's going on in the normal distribution. The mean divides the normal distribution in half. So 50% of the normal distribution will be above here, will be above the mean. If this part of the normal distribution is 0 0.3707, then this part right in here will be half of the normal distribution minus that chunk of the normal distribution, and what's left is going to be in there. So if the entire, this entire section above the mean is half of the normal distribution, that's 0 0.50, and we just subtract 0.1293, then this part right here Twelve point nine three percent of the normal distribution would be expected to fall between the mean of one hundred and a raw score of one hundred five. Um, so you can use the normal distribution to calculate what's the probability of getting a score this high or higher. That's this part. This low or lower. That's that part. Or between scores. That would be this part. So once you sort of take into account the characteristics of the normal distribution, it's not too difficult to calculate percentages that fall above, below, between different raw scores and Z scores. So that's how you use uh, the um, normal distribution and Z scores to calculate probabilities. In um, the next video, I'm going to demonstrate how you use the normal distribution to calculate a percentile score.